Hey guys, this is So Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer, and this tutorial is going to show you how to draw a shoe in Illustrator, and we're gonna use a few really specific tools that do really great tricks. Now, the first thing is that one of the tools that we're gonna use is the live called Live Corners, and this was released in Illustrator CC, so if you're in an earlier version, you won't have this. Um, so we're gonna use Live Corners to easily create rounded corners within our illustration. We're going to use the Shape Builder tool to easily break our tool into separate shapes. We're going to use the zigzag feature to easily create bar tack stitching and all sorts of other great things, but those are some of the cool tricks right up front I'm gonna tell you we're gonna do. All right, so let's dive in here. In Illustrator, I've got this booty. And again, I'm very transparent about the fact that I cannot draw from scratch out of my head. So I always start with some type of picture or reference to illustrate from. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this layer. I'm gonna create a layer on top of it to draw. Now there is some level of assumed knowledge in this tutorial, so I'm not gonna tell you every single detail about every little thing that I'm doing. I'll try to give you the most of what you need to know. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start drawing with the pen tool. I'm gonna just draw the entire outline of the shoe. It, just the outline. It doesn't matter where there's different panels or different um, materials being used. I'm just going to draw the outline. I'm also not really going to draw any of some of these rounded corners because I'm going to use the live corner where just do that. So I'm going to start with the pen tool right here in this corner. I'm just going to come up and I'm not going to worry about some of these like really tight um, nice corners because again I'll show you a really cool trick for drawing them later. And we're even gonna use it in the toe. Yes, I know that looks really weird what I just did, but I'll show you. You can kind of start to see some of these really soft style lines that you don't, um, not style lines, but just these soft lines that happen in the shoe that you don't necessarily have to draw from scratch. Now, some of them you can draw from scratch, all right? So there's some, I'm gonna draw this, uh, we'll undo that, I need to think I need to start a little bit lower. This nice sort of, um, portion down here in the heel I wanted to draw from scratch. Now I'll come over here and drop that anchor point. I'm trying to draw a nice little rounded corner there. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is using the live widget tool. Um, not the live widget, the corner widget, live corners. If your tool is not showing up, come up to view and choose show corner widget. Okay, so the feature is called live corners but it's called a corner widget from the view dropdown. So hide corner widget would turn it off, show corner widget would turn it on. So make sure you've got yours turned on. Now what's gonna happen is as you select individual anchor points, you'll see there's a little circular icon that appears right inside of that anchor point. What I can do is I can hover over that anchor, that icon. Now specifically, you do need to do this with the direct selection tool, okay? So grab the direct selection tool, grab, select the anchor point you wanna adjust, hover over that circle, and then you can kind of drag to curve that in. Okay, so we'll do that for this one. I'm gonna just drag to curve that in. I'm gonna come over here and I'll pull it right here to kind of curve that out. And you can get some really nice rounded shapes using this feature. I'm even gonna do one right here for the back of the heel. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pen tool again. I'm gonna draw all the lines that I see that create different portions of the shoe. So let's zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna start right here, and I'm gonna draw this one, which kind of creates this sort of uh, outer edge where we would see the inside. Now, this path is getting a little too curved. A cool trick here, I can hold the Option or Alt key, hover over this handle, drag this handle in a bit more, because I know that handle's a bit severe, and now I can draw this. That looks good. All right, and then we'll just come back over here to the back of the heel and draw that path. Okay, I hit the enter return key to disconnect and I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna now draw this path here that separates the wedge from the actual shoe. If I don't call these things the right thing, uh, you'll have to bear with me, I'm not a shoe designer and I don't know what all the portions of a shoe are actually called, okay? But I think we'll be able to get close enough um, to get your illustration done. Now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna draw one last line here because there is um, this little uh, wedge piece at the bottom. Again, I don't know what that's called. All right, we'll zoom out. Now, it looks like I've gotten all the little pieces and portions drawn, so let's go ahead and turn this layer off and see what we've got. So I've got my shoe. A couple things. I don't love how this is looking here, so I might want to bump this out a little bit. Um, maybe I grab both of these anchor points and pull that out a bit. 
And the other thing I noticed is that this is looking a little bit hard. So again, I can hover over this anchor point and just pull this in to kind of round that a little bit, right? It's a really, really great feature. So now that looks a little better. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break these into separate shapes because as we know from our shoe, we're gonna probably wanna put a darker color in here and a different texture in here and a different texture in here to emulate the different portions of the shoe. So I'll turn this layer off again. I'm gonna select everything. At this point, we might wanna change it to black. I had it in red just so as we traced, it was really easy to see. I'll change it to black and I'm gonna use the Shape Builder tool. Okay, the Shape Builder tool is a very cool tool. It's located about halfway down on the left. Shift M is the hotkey. We can grab this tool and as we hover over different portions of our illustration, we'll notice this gray sort of texture show up. What that means is if we click there, that specific shape is going to be created as its own shape. Right now, what we have is one outline and all these individual paths. Okay, it would have been a big pain to draw each individual shape by itself. Instead, we can draw the entire outline, draw some individual paths inside. Now I can select all of this, grab my Shape Builder tool, and I'm just gonna click once on each of these, and I know it doesn't really look like anything's happening, but what it is doing is it's breaking each of these into individual shapes. Pretty fancy. So now what we can do is we can say, okay, this should be a darker camel color. This should be a lighter camel. This is even darker brown. And this is even one step darker, okay? So now we're starting to get much closer to our actual illustration. Now, I'm just gonna take this one and I'm gonna give it no fill color for a minute. So I can come back here and I can see what else I have going on on my illustration. So let's zoom in here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the zipper. Now, I already have a zipper, zipper brush developed and I'm not gonna go through that in this tutorial because it's a whole different animal and a whole different tutorial to show you that. Um, if you wanna go to my site at soheidi.com, you can check out various zipper and pattern brush tutorials to learn, but for now, I'm just gonna use the one that I have. So I can grab my pen tool. I'm gonna to draw a path that goes from here down to here and I'm going to apply my zipper brush. Now I've got my brush set up with a couple cool features. One is that I have it set up to change the color based on the color of the stroke. The other thing is that I have it set up to include the stitching around the edge as well as the zipper stop at the bottom. So I can take this, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit because I think it needs to go a little farther. It's also quite large, so let's change our stroke weight maybe to 0.5, how does that look? That looks better to kind of emulate the zipper that we have in here. Now, the next thing we have is the zipper pull. So I'm actually gonna move this zipper out of the way so I can come in here and I can see exactly how this pull is put together. So I'm gonna grab my uh, ellipse tool to draw this. And I'm just gonna draw a pretty quick rudimentary one, but you're gonna get the idea. Again, we're gonna use the, path, uh, the shape builder tool to do this. So I'm just gonna draw a nice circle here and then I will grab my rectangle tool to draw a rectangle here. Okay, now I'm drawing the actual slider here, which is this back portion. And then I will draw another rectangle kind of right on the top, and that's gonna emulate um, this top portion where the, the pull actually goes through. I'm gonna grab these two shapes, and let's make them black so we can actually see what we're doing here. I'm gonna make sure they're aligned, so I'll line those center, and I'll grab my Shape Builder tool again, Shift M, and then instead of breaking these into separate shapes, I'm gonna click and drag to merge these all together, okay? So again, the Shape Builder, if I click once on each individual section, it will break them into individual shapes. However, if I click and drag, it will merge them into one united shape. It works similarly to the Pathfinder, but I think it's much, much easier than the Pathfinder. All right, and so now we've got this portion here, and let's pull this a little bit taller so that it actually fits on top. And again, we'll make that black just so we can see it while we're drawing. The next thing I've got is this portion here, which is actually the pull that the leather string attaches to, the leather cord attaches to. So to draw this, I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I could kind of draw it over here if I want to draw it on top of it, but I'll just draw it right here. So basically I've got one rectangle on the top and what I've actually got is another rectangle inside. So I'm gonna do object, path, offset path, turn my preview on. And this is gonna be a little bit smaller what that does is it makes another path directly, exactly offset of the other one by however, uh, whatever value you put in here. So I'll choose OK. And then I can grab my selection tool and I'll pull this up a little bit because there's a little bit of space at the bottom. Now what I want to do is I want to grab my direct selection tool specifically. I'm going to hold this anchor point, 
hold the shift key and this anchor point. I'm gonna use that corner widget again to kind of round those corners in because this is a nice and rounded pull right here. And again, I'm gonna do the same for this. Hold the shift key to grab both of those. Use my corner widget to pull those in. So now I've got this nice shape here. The last thing I've got is this sort of T shape that's coming out the bottom that's what the leather cord attaches onto. And I'm actually just gonna draw this portion here and then we've got this portion right here, which is how it would be in reality. Now it's looking a little bit off-centered, so let's go ahead and select all of this and let's align those center. And I wanna merge these all together because this is a molded zipper pull and this is one continuous piece of metal. So again, Shift M, and I can click and drag to merge all of those shapes together. Very cool. The other thing and the last thing I'm gonna show you with the Shape Builder tool that we can do is I'm gonna hold the Shift key to select both of these and I can actually use this to cut one shape out of another shape. Now to really make this example uh, obvious, let's fill this with white. Now we can see that this is just a shape on top of this. I want this actually to be cut out so I can see through it. So I'm gonna select both of these shapes. Again, I'm gonna grab my Shape Builder tool, Shift M, and as I hover over this shape, I can hold the Option or Alt key, and the Option or Alt key will allow me to cut this shape out. So with that key held, I can click that, Again, an option or alt key, I can click on this shape and it'll actually delete that shape. So now what I've got is one object that's gonna emulate my zipper pull and perhaps I made it a bit big. That's all right, we can make it just a bit smaller to be the right size. And now that's gonna go on top of my zipper slider. This shape here would be in the very front, so I'll arrange that to the front. Object arrange, bring to front. I just use the keyboard shortcut. The other thing we might wanna do is, we might actually wanna fill this with a gradient. So let's do that and I'll fill it with just the grayscale gradient and then I can come up here to the gradient and I can say, you know what, this would actually be, let's see here. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drag this up here to make it like a kind of goldish gradient to match what we have. So again, I just took this co color here with my gradient panel open and my artwork selected. I'm gonna take this swatch and drag it up right onto that little bucket right there. That gives me the gradient swatch there. From here, the last thing I need to do is to draw this leather piece here. And so I'm going to draw just a rectangle. We're gonna keep it really simple. And that does not get that gradient fill. It's gonna get the same fill that the color of my shoe gets, which I think is about that color, if I don't, if I recall correctly. Now the other thing I wanna do is there's kind of a little notch in here. So I'm gonna grab my pen tool. I'm gonna to drop three anchor points. Now with this object selected, as I hover over the edge, you see the plus sign. That means I'm gonna be adding an anchor point. So I drop three anchor points to add the anchor points because what I wanna do is grab my direct selection tool then, select this arrow and come down to create this sort of little V notch. And now this is really emulating how this would look in real life, right? This has kind of a little notch and it's a loop of leather that goes over that T-shape on that zipper pull. Last thing we do is we've got a little stitch here and I wanna show you how to emulate bar tack. So I'm gonna take my pen tool I'm gonna drop a path right here. Now, what I'm gonna do is with that path selected, and I'm gonna come up to Effect, Distort and Transform, and I'm gonna choose Zigzag, okay? I'm gonna turn my preview on. Now, at first we get like a really drastic result. So what I wanna do is I wanna change the size of that to something much smaller, so I'm dropping this down. Depending on the size of your sketch, the values that you need to input here may be very different. You just can play around with the preview on. Now ridges per segment is gonna define how dense that zigzag is, and I want mine to be pretty dense. And I also want it to be smooth, not a corner. Now it's looking pretty good, although it's looking quite um, squashed together, and I actually need to change that by changing the stroke weight once I'm done with this. So I'll choose okay. I'm gonna change this to be a 0.25 stroke weight, and maybe 0.35, depending on how dense you want that to look. You also might wanna change, if you notice the edges of this are kind of harsh, you can change this to have a round cap at the end and it'll soften the edges of that a little bit. So let's go ahead and take this whole thing here. I'm gonna group this, Commander Control G. So now we've got our zipper pull, which we can place right on top of our zipper and we could you know, kind of turn this on the side if we wanted to add a little bit of movement to it. And now let's see how we're looking. So I'm gonna turn my shoe off, my photo off, grab this portion of my shoe, give it the fill color that it should get, which is that color. And now our shoe's looking really good. The last few details we need to add is stitching along the top here. 
Um, and if we wanted to add, we could add a stripe texture to this wedge, which we saw in the original shoe. So I'll come in here and I will select this object here. Again, we're gonna use the offset path that we used earlier to create a path that exactly runs along the edge of this to emulate our stitching. So I'm gonna choose object, path, offset path, turn on the preview, and you can see it creates a path that follows directly along the edge. Now I have a little break here because it's too tight, so I could do a couple things. I could say, what if I go negative 1.5, and that prevents that little break from happening. Otherwise, I could live with the break and I could fix it later. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, portions of this path I don't need, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool. I'm gonna select this anchor point. I'm gonna hold the Shift key and I'm gonna select this anchor point. I'm gonna come up here to my control panel. I'm gonna say cut path at selected anchor points. So I cut that right there. And now what I've got is two separate paths. So I'll delete that path. I'll select this path, take the fill color off, come over to my stroke panel, turn on a dashed line, and I can adjust this. So maybe I want my dash a little bit thicker, or my gap thicker, and I'm also gonna give it a round cap so that it has nice edges um, on the edge of the stitching, it just looks a little bit more accurate. See, if we turn this off, you'll notice there was some stitching on the inside. There's also some stitching on this outside portion here, so I wanna add that as my last step. So let me turn this on, turn the shoe off, and again, I can select the shoe portion here. I can come up to Object, Path, Offset Path, turn my preview on, and again, I'm gonna leave the settings the same so that the stitch is the same offset that it is on the inside of the shoe because that would be most accurate. I'll choose OK. And now I wanna come in and I wanna select the anchor points where I wanna cut it. So I'm gonna select this anchor point here in this corner, hold the Shift key, select this anchor point here, and I'm gonna choose uh, the, cut, the cut path at selected anchor points from the control bar at the top. Once I've done that, I can take my selection tool and delete this portion select this portion, turn the fill color off. I could have taken the fill color off originally. And again, apply the dashed line. I can do this a couple ways. I can redo all the settings, otherwise I can grab my eyedropper tool and I can pick up the dashed uh, line from this one. The other thing I might wanna do is make the weight of this dashed line a little bit thinner because it's looking quite heavy. So let's go down to 0.5 and I think that looks better. And one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my zipper I'm just gonna kind of line it up with that a little bit better, and that means I should probably move the zipper pull over as well. So now we have a very, very, very realistic looking shoe with all the stitching, the zipper, and the zipper pull. Again, the last thing we might wanna do is add a little stripe texture to this, so let's do that really quick. So I'm gonna just make a basic stripe texture using this fill color here. Actually, let's do this darker fill color and then we'll hold the Option or Alt key and make a copy of that, and we'll go even darker brown. And I'm just gonna leave it a simple, simple stripe texture here. So I'll select both of these. They're basically just solid rectangles with no fill color lined up perfectly. I'm gonna drag and drop this into my swatches panel. Perhaps I can put it right here with the rest of my browns that I'm working with. And now I can select this piece here and select the stripe, which gives that little texture in the wedge of the shoe. There is the completed shoe illustration. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what I am doing and would like more, please visit my website at soheidi.com. Sign up for my email list. I give away tons of free tutorials and downloads and templates that you don't see here on YouTube. I would love to get to know you. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye-bye.